Good evening. We will uh, start with the new concept or new lesson. It will be civics, the second chapter. The union executive. So, as you all know, three organs we are having in our country legislature, executive, and judiciary. So, already legislature organ we have already discussed we have already talked about the legislature uh, organ so now we will go with the second uh, the important organ of our country that is the uh, union executive so when we are talking about uh, this particular lesson the union executive majorly we are talking uh, now how in legislature we talked about uh, two houses of the parliament and about the speaker uh, i mean about the speaker and powers and functions of the parliament so like this uh, the union executive in this chapter we are talking about the one particular person so that will be called as the president so in this chapter this year since the syllabus has been reduced so we will be talking only the topics like first we will be having a qualification then the method of uh, election that is electoral college then are reasons for indirect election then term of office then uh, the concept called the procedure for impeachment so this uh, i mean uh, five topics we will be discussing then straight away we will go with the powers and functions of president only the six topics we are going to discuss in this particular uh, chapter only for this year okay so when we see about uh, this particular uh, lesson so let us go one by one so first we will be talking about the union executive the introduction okay so when we say, talk about the introduction of the union executive it has been said that union executive okay so union executive is the organ which is made up of the president vice president prime minister and council of ministers so there two houses of the parliament and the president the house is made that is the legislature so legislature is a organ which is made up of two houses of the parliament and the president but whereas the union executive is the organ which is made up of president vice president prime minister and the council of ministers but in that the majorly we will be talking the president one of the important personality of this organ and second point says the president is the nominal head of the state nominal head of the state now prime minister is the constitutional head of our country whereas president we call him as a nominal head of a, a state why he is called as nominal head that we will be talking here when we talk the reasons for the indirect election and as you all know president is the first citizen of the country first citizen of the country okay so that's the introduction to points which we are having here. now straight away we will go with the first topic so that is the qualification if a person want if he or she wants to be a president of our country president of our country what should be your qualification so if you see first and foremost is citizenship you should hold a citizenship of india then only you can stand for the president election and the second concept say point says that if you want to you are eligible to contest the president election only when your age is 35 or above 35 below 35 no 35 and above then only you are eligible to contest the president election. Then the third one is very important. When you are contesting the president election, 
you are not supposed to hold any government job okay any office under a government if you are holding a government job you have to resign it and you have to contest the election okay so because at that time having a two office the government so that was it's against the constitution so that is the reason if at all you want to contest the president election a person should not hold any government job okay that's the one aspect so which we are having the third one is should be qualified for the election as a member of the house of the people okay the power one who is the president one who is contesting the election so he or she should have a majority support of the house of the people okay then he or she can contest the president election the last one is he or she should deposit a sum of money as a security okay suppose if you lose the president election okay suppose if you lose the president election or you if you fail to secure the president uh, i am in uh, the office so you have to give us uh, some of the amount so, uh, that means uh, uh, one six. Okay, so one six. Of course, you should receive if you are contesting the election. If not, as a penalty, the amount will the amount which is, I mean amount is be given to the deposit. So that's the one aspect so which we are having. So this is a very important qualification. Okay, citizen of India, thirty five years age, and this is very important. This three. Okay, the qualifications which we should, he or she should have. If you are having all this, uh, I mean, uh, qualification and if you are eligible to contest the election, then you can go for the second, uh, the first one, that is uh, contesting the election. So, for legislature, I mean, legislature, I mean, law, I mean, the organ, the election we can method is universal adult branches method. But whereas for the president election, we use a method called an electoral college method. The method used to elect the president, so that is electoral college. The speciality of this method is, it is an indirect election. Whereas universal adult funds is direct election. But whereas electoral college method is, it is an indirect election. Okay. So indirect election, when we say, it won't be having a large number. Now, how universal advantage is a large number of uh, voters will you can see but here you cannot see uh, in the president election or the electoral college method or indirect election, you cannot you cannot see large number of voters you can see a limited number of voters who is that limited number of voters if you see one is all the members elected members of Vidhan Sabha that is all state legislative assemblies that is MLEs all the MLEs of the states and the elected members of the Lok Sabha and Raj Sabha, that is MPs, the both they join together by transferring a single transferable vote, the president is being elected. Okay, so that is the composition of electoral college. So composition when we say MLAs and MPs, MLAs and the MPs of a state and of the I mean central joins together and they elect the president. Okay, that's the one aspect. So that is the composition. Composition when we say two characters comes, MLAs and the MPs. Okay, Vidhan Sabha. You can write it as Vidhan Sabha or State Legislative Assembly members, members of the State Legislative Assembly members, or the members of the elected members of the Lok Sabha or Rajya Sabha. Or even you can write MLAs and the MPs. They are the people who elect the, I mean, uh, President of India by the Electoral College method. So that's the one aspect. So which we are having it the next uh, the third uh, the concept if you see so that is reasons for indirect election why when we conduct uh, i mean for prime minister and mlas and mps when we conduct a uh, direct election why not we cannot conduct a uh, direct election to a president see one thing you kept in mind when if the president election also when it is direct there won't be any difference between constitutional ed and 
the nominal head. There won't be any difference between Prime Minister and the President. Okay, Prime Minister and President, there won't be any difference. I mean difference. When a Prime Minister is elected by the people, okay, all the powers are vested in the hands of Prime Minister. And suppose you just imagine, even if the President is elected by the, I mean, uh, the people, it is very difficult. Even uh, the President will become an, uh, a very powerful person as equal to Prime Minister. Okay, so that is the reason. In order to discriminate that, there is a difference in the nominal head and everyone there is a difference in the constitutional head. So, we made the Prime Minister election as an indirect election where the people elect, people's representative. Whereas, the President is a being a nominal head and moreover, he is a person who will be comes under or he is a person who comes under the list of an top officials, the first person. So when he is on the top official list, so his post, okay, he has to be called as a nominal head. So that is the reason the elected representatives, so they elect the president. Okay, so in order to make a difference between the nominal head as well as the constitutional head, so the election of president always it will be conducted in the form of, I mean, indirect. Okay, so that is the and at the moreover, we are having parliamentary form of government. Okay, parliamentary form of government. Presence of uh, president rule as well as the prime minister rule. Okay, parliamentary form of government. So when we are having it, and parliamentary form of democracy or parliamentary form of government, I mean, India is having it. So in which the president will act just as a nominal head. Okay, he will be just as a nominal head. So that is the reason. So all uh, the functioning of our country will be carried out on the name of a president. Okay, so that's he is just a nominal head. So that is the reason. So we are having an the president election as an indirect election. Okay, that's the one aspect so which we are having it. And here we are having the reasons. One is why president election is indirect means because in order to maintain the dignity of a post called the president, he is the top official. So when he is a top official. He, he is the dignity has to be, I mean, maintained. So that is the reason. So we are having an uh, indirect election. Second one is it saves time, money, and energy. As you all know, to conduct an, uh, one, I mean, Lok Sabha election, like MLAs, MPs election, almost the course of rupees we have to spend. A lot of time is required, energy is required. So election commission has to work hard. So all these things because they have they will be doing in the general election itself okay same procedure we cannot have it for the even uh, the president we can have it but it's a waste of time okay it's a waste of time and it's a waste of money and even the energy is wasted so that is the reason these two reasons makes the president election as an indirect election okay, that's the two major reasons for which we are having then when we come to the next uh, the fourth the major aspect okay that is the fourth major aspect that is uh, the term of office once if you elect a president so how long a president can remain in the office so it is been said that according to the constitutional term the president also can remain in the office for the term of five years okay whereas vice president for six years okay vice president's term will be six years but president term will be Five years. So just keep it in mind. It's very important. And the next uh, the term is or next uh, the second point we are having is president may voluntarily resign from the office. Suppose he is elected the two years he has I mean continued as a president and if he is not interested, okay, if he is not interested, he or she may give a voluntary. A resignation so they can uh, I mean give okay that's the one aspect so which we are and one thing you keep it in mind suppose if five years term is over will the president will vacate his office no okay the president will remain in the office even after the five years of expiry of his term till the new successor okay till the new successor that means till the next president is elected and 
takes over the office till that time the president will remain in the office. but normal term is five years okay normal term will be the five years so which we are having it okay so that is the one aspect so which we are and suppose he, uh, if you want to give an voluntary resignation simply he cannot vacate his office so he has to write on a resignation letter and that resignation letter should be given to the vice president so after giving that the president can vacate his office okay, that is the second one we are having it and next one we are having suppose if there is any disputes between the election of president any problem or any disputes if it takes place who can solve the problem that is supreme court of india the supreme court is the one which solves the problems which uh, exist in the election of president okay that's the one aspect so which we are having and one note you keep it in mind but that is not there but just keep it in your mind once if the president is elected so as you all know they have to take a oath so that oath is led by chief justice of india and even the appoint also is done by chief justice of india appoint letter so as you all know in india all the appoints will take place at the central level that is president is the one who leads the oath and who appoints the i mean personalities but the president the appoint and oath will be done by a chief justice of india okay that's the one aspect so which we are having it so that's about the i mean qualification and electoral college as well as uh, the reason for the indirect election and the term of office which we are having it so next class we have one more concept we are having it this is very important concept so that will be impeachment method okay so impeachment procedure we are having it so that we will go with the next class so till here you can go with it and next class we will go with the i mean impeachment the procedure for impeachment and uh, the powers and functions of uh, the president so we will go it in the next class so till here you can uh, go through it so once you can uh, uh, i mean revise with the textbook okay so go through the once only this topic qualification composition and uh, uh, reasons for the indirect election and the term these four concepts you can refer once in a textbook so next class we will move with the some more uh, the topics about the union executive thank you